Hello, welcome to Strictly Sega, where we're no longer really strictly that Sega anymore. I'm doing more of, uh, I'm more into Laserdisc nowadays and been collecting for the last 12 years or so. It came from, as I mentioned in another video, uh, from being a Sega fan and wanting to get myself a laser active. I never did get myself a laser active, but what I did get was an addiction to Laserdiscs. I've hit a pretty substantial mark over these last 12 years. I finally hit a thousand discs and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a just a catalog video from A to Z. Each of these squares have about 50 to 70 odd discs in each one of them and so each of these squares is going to be one video each, you know. Yeah, so let's get started. <laughs> Technically not an A and not a number, but it has a little star in the corner. It has digital sound, but it's a pan and scan pressing of batteries not included. It's a fun movie, great story. What can I say? My, my partner, who's a big softie for that kind of stuff, loves those kind of movies. Next up, oh, we have 187. This has a great ending. If anyone has, if you haven't seen this yet, it's worth picking up. Samuel L. Jackson kicking ass with a uh, AC3 soundtrack. Widescreen presentation, good pressing, good movie. Next up we have 2001 Space Odyssey. Now this is a Kubrick film, probably my favorite Kubrick film, top three anyway. And I've also got the Criterion box set version as well up there, but I'll do another box set video later. Uh, next up is The Last Shout, absolutely fabulous. This is um, just after the end of season three, but you want to felt like it was going to be done, you know, they uh, did that, which was really cool. The Abyss, James Cameron, this is a fun movie, um, this is the extended version, I've always favoured the extended version over the, uh, the normal one, and I've got this and the box set version of it as well, can't tell you that many differences besides the presentation and maybe the CAV versus CLV pressing, and that's it, you know. Yeah, great movie, and Dolby Digital AC3, so you can't go wrong, widescreen, good movie. This isn't a, a bad film either, this is Absolute Power with Gene Hackman and Clint Eastwood, directed by Clint Eastwood as well. It's a political thriller kind of movie. Yeah, it delivers. To the opposite spectrum, we have the Ace Ventura films, Ace Ventura Nature Calls and the first film. Good for a laugh, the kids love these, you know, and uh, I still love a bit of Jim Carrey, i got to say. Right, so, Adam's Family, we have the Adam's Family Values, and the Adam's Family Normal Movie. They're creepy, they're kooky, and spooky, and they're ooky, and they're Barry Sonnenfeld, the guy who made Men in Black, one of my favourite directors. He also did a TV show called The Tick, which is really funny, with Patrick Warburton. Really good show. Alright, next up we have an Australian classic film. I try to get lots of the Aussie films to pad out my collection. This is Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Really nice pressing, good clean. It has a digital sound, doesn't it? Yep, it does. Okay, next up we have Air America. Sadly, this is just the pan and scan version of it. I tried trying to get all the Carol Co films. Carol, Carol Co, Carol Co, you know what I mean. Need I say more? Next up we have, oh, well this one's a bit of a tricky one isn't it? Well I got this one and it was rotted. And so what I had to do was when I got a second copy I took the disc from one and the other disc from the other copy and made up one copy of the movie. And I've got to say even now it's still a little bit, you know what I mean, speckle. Not that bad though, you know. Still, yeah, it's, it's, it's Air Force One, it's famous for Rotter, you know. Okay, next we have some Kevin Bacon. And this is a fun Sunday afternoon movie, you know, like, 
And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have one of Michael Caine's greatest up there with uh, Get Carter, you know, and all that. 1966, Michael Caine, looking at his very most charming. Yeah, so Michael Caine was the reason I got that, but wow, what a storyline that turned out to be. Oh, oof. Okay, so next we have Alien Nation. I got this because uh, I'm a big fan of James Kahn films. I try to get as many James Kahn films as I can. You'll see a lot of them in my collection. I'm still chasing after Rollerball, if anyone has that out there. But this is very much like that uh, Bright movie that with Will Smith on Netflix. It's a very similar story of two cops from... You know, mixed backgrounds. I've moved positions now. Okay, we have a bit of Alien action with Alien Resurrection. Sadly, I don't have Alien 3, but I've got the rest of them. This is Dolby Digital widescreen. 1997 release, so the picture's really nice. You know, um, by then they've pretty much landed laser disc pressing. There's not many bad ones. This is AC3. I love AC3 discs. Um... My amp has it all built into it. I don't always, you know, if it's there. If I have the AC3 version or a stereo version, I'm always going to grab the AC3 version. Almost an Angel, Paul Hogan. This is another Aussie movie. Oh, well, Aussie actor, but American movie. It was the last of an era, put it that way, you know. For anybody from Australia, we know our Paul Hogan, you know. Anyway, uh, next up, yeah, I have a lot of comedies, so... Here's a uh, bit of Chris Farley. That's the reason why I got this. I try to get all the Chris Farley films. I think I'm one short with uh, I Need Dirty Work still. Or Beverly Hills Ninja. So I need two. Beverly Hills Ninja and Dirty Work still. But I'll get there. I'll get there. This one's the opposite of comedy. American History X. Edward Furlong and uh, Edward Norton. It's a really nice pressing. AC3. And lots of curb stomping action. You know. Looks terrific. Next is, uh, what's this, American President. Now, I have a bit of a crush on Annette Bedding. Sadly, she went and married, uh, what was his name from Dick Tracy? Warren Beatty. And uh, that was a shame, but either way, she's gorgeous. So even in Captain Marvel, I think she's awesome. Okay, this is uh, Werewolf in London. And John Landis directed this one, and I believe the special effects were done by none other than Rick Baker. That's what it says here, and I believe it. And yeah, it is awesome film. It scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. Those special effects are creepy back then. Anaconda. This one's more for my partner than me. I'm not really a big fan of this film, but yeah, Eric Stoltz. I like Eric Stoltz. Angels in the Outfield, Danny Glover, Christopher, uh, Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. And uh, it, it's a cute little film. It has that dude from 50-50, but when he was only a little kid. Next up, we have another widescreen presentation. Yes, digital sound, Dolby Surround. Another Stakeout. This is a really good movie. I think this was better than the first one, but uh, that's my opinion. Just... Cute and fun, you know, it's a silly little film and yeah, anyway, Apocalypse Now. It's the 35mm um, interposition with the um, digital sound, AC3, everything I feel like has been packed onto this one, you know, this is a good version. From what I was getting from the uh, from the live streams, um, that you ideally want the, the new Blu-ray one, that's the uh, best version to get. Ron Howard directed this one. Um, Kevin Bacon, Bill Paxton. We've had them in a couple of other movies. This is Apollo 13. Tom Hanks is... Really, this is the one that propelled him to superstardom, I think, after Philadelphia. Um, yeah. Good movie. Next up, we have uh, Armageddon. This is Armageddon, but the, sadly not the Criterion version. I would love to get the one with Ben Affleck slagging out the film. That looks really fun. Um, this is still a good, fun, interesting movie to watch, you know, it's just Sunday afternoon, like I said, turn off your brain and watch an action film, you know. Uh, Around the World in 80 Days, this is the original Michael Todd version. I love this movie, this is really good, the bullfighting scene in this is great. What's funny is I watched the new one with Jackie Chan before I watched this, so although the plot is 
exactly the same. There are a little variation, little differences. Either way, this one is a much more in-depth film, a much more just soak into the couch and soak it all in movie because that like the the bullfighting scene alone goes for at least 20 minutes you know yeah no good film really good film sadly it's pan and scan even though it's in uh, digital sound warner brothers was just always pan and scan they were like they were listening to the audience and the audience said they want their screen filled up so warner brothers complied and yet brought out more and more discs that were full screen rather than widescreen, which is what we would really want now looking back at it. But anyway, I take what I can get when I when it comes to discs because we live in Australia and there's not that many compared to America. It's Arthur 2. Arthur 1 was much better. It was alright. Next up we have Assassins. I'm trying to get all the Stallone films, you know, Luck Up and um, even Over the Top and everything. So yeah, this is required if you want to get the whole set. Nonetheless, this is a Richard Donner film. I like Richard Donner from Lethal Weapon and stuff like that, you know. Um, Superman, of course. And uh, yeah, so it's it's an enjoyable film. It's not a bad film. It's a lot better than The Specialist, which came out right around this time as well. Okay, on to the next bundle. Uh, another, um, did I do this? No. Associate. This is when Whoopi Goldberg dresses up like a fat white guy. It's really awkward. This is a good one. Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. I would really love to get, um, no. This is International Man of Mystery. I really want to get my hands on The Spy Who Shagged Me. Uh, AC3 though, widescreen. It's good pressing. This is not so much. This is a bit soft, but it's a good Tom Hanks movie. You know, it's when he was a bit zany, a bit more fun, uh, before he started getting the serious films. And, uh, yeah, I like that era, right up through the burbs and stuff like that. This one is a, um, well, you know, it's Roger Dangerfield, what can you say? Back to school. So this is the one where he uh, goes back to uni to help his son. Hey, everybody, Shakespeare was on me! Backdraft. Yep, that's De Niro, Kurt Russell. Yeah, it's a um, Ron Howard movie, so that's always good. The same guy made Apollo, and he's always pumping out great films, Ron Howard, isn't he? Next up, we have oh, the Michael Bay film. So there's three Michael Bay films on Laserdisc, as far as I can remember. There's Bad Boys, The Rock, and Armageddon. That's all, isn't there? Um, another movie I'm not really fond of, but, you know, it... it it is what it is. You, you you find it and then you kind of don't want to get rid of it, you know. Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon. In order to have a Stanley Kubrick collection, you have to get all of them. And I've watched this a few times. I'll give it another go. If it's on, I'll sit through it. You know, it's not a terrible film. It's quite good, actually. If you really like an olden days movie, um, one really good one is The Duelists. I really like that one. Now this one is a, a Zucca film, yeah it is, and has the cast of South Park in it, or you know, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. It's an okay movie. Beaches. This is one that I like to, I don't know, if I have a girl over and they, I want to see them cry, this is the hit, this is what you put on. You want to make a girl cry? Okay, next is Batman. This is my favourite. This 1966 with the bat shark repellent. I just loved it as a kid and now as an adult I'm really excited to have it. And of course the four American Batman films. Batman Forever with um, Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones. Val Kilmer as Batman. And then we had uh, Batman, oh hang on, we got Batman and Robin first before we jump off to Batman Returns. Batman and Robin with Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl and uh, Bat Nipples. And then we have the original two Tim Burton Batman films. Of course, I remember in primary school sitting there and drawing this logo everywhere we could. It was just such a 
amazing logo in in the era that we just we were just nuts about it all right so uh beavis and butthead do america that has this really trippy segment in the middle when they're in the desert that's done by a um a special guest rob rob zombie i think is the special guest artist for that bit but it's it's out there right eh? it's really worth checking out just for that bit alone the music's good too it's, it's not a bad pressing it's the colors are a bit soft even you know because it's animated you'd, you'd expect it to be nice and sharp like you know toy story or lion king or one of the other disney movies or something like that but yeah it's a bit soft lots of famous voice actors too which wasn't really common back then you know um, bruce willis was in it i think and uh, demi moore anyway let's move on beetlejuice and yes it's pan and scan because it's bloody warner brothers there are don't get me wrong there are warner brothers widescreen releases just sadly not as many dolby surround yeah it's a good it's a great film if you haven't seen this michael keaton is incredible in this film he's so funny there's something next up is being there this is a great film one of peter seller's last movies he made and um one of his more significant films it's quite clever really well shot sadly this is pan and scan because it's warner brothers again yeah warner brothers just held on to that pan and scan thing Speaking of which, I had originally only seen this film in Pan and Scan. I haven't actually watched this version of the movie yet. I look forward to seeing what it ca encapsulates, the, the full widescreen version of Ben-Hur. Um, it's a great film. You l I love it. I've never seen it full widescreen, so I'm looking forward to doing that soon. Although I have a huge haven't watched pile that I need to get through first. The best little whorehouse in Texas. I was in a, um, a, a production, a stage show, working on this. This, um, you know, the movies come a little bit, bit, a little bit sentimental to it. A bit of action, best of the best too. Yep, it's uh, Eric Roberts. You know, it's just the usual uh, kind of, you know, late eighties, early nineties kickboxing kind of film that was around back then. Jerry Buckheimer, Tony Scott, Beverly Hills Cop 2 with Eddie Murphy, Judge Reinhold, um, yeah, John Ashton. This is a great film. I like Beverly Hills Cop 2. It's my favourite of the series, actually. Uh, this one, my partner absolutely hated, you see, because the version I've got is a, like a, a cut, shortened version of it because the film's in French. Um, the American cut of The Big Blue and... Uh, Le Grand Blue, it's called, or something like that in France. And you can get a version that has English dub, I believe. And I want to get my hands on that. Okay, so the next one is a bit more Kung Fu. And, of course, starring the legendary Bruce Lee. This was his first film, I believe, The Big Boss. I've got a whole heap of these uh, Bruce Lee films. I really like them. They're from Japan. And uh, finally for this little pile is a Criterion release. It's, well, it's nothing special. There's no special features or anything. But it was a nice pressing. We have the Big Chill, the Criterion Big Chill. Yeah, so that pretty much wraps up box number one of these. And uh, we'll get on to box number two soon.